In this video I will show how to build primitive robots with some Lego-like elements called Netza Inventor's Kit as well as a microbit. Robots are often used in the industry, for instance when producing cars. We start with this grab claw, which can be closed and opened with button A and B. The program is very simple and looks like this. First you need to download the Netza and Planet X extensions. The grab claw can be built as shown here. A 360 degree servo motor is included in the set. It must be connected to S1 on the Netza board as shown here. The yellow wire should point upwards and the board should be well charged. Here I have expanded the program and connected a potentiometer from the set. The potentiometer looks like this. It must be connected to J1 on the board. The potentiometer has three legs which inside the board are connected to the microbit like this. When turning one way on the potentiometer, P1 on the microbit is connected to three volts. If you turn the other way, P1 is connected to ground. If it is in the middle position, P1 will have a voltage of 1.5 volts and so on. The new block is set to be a 360 degree servo connected to S1 and it must rotate a number of degrees which is determined from the potentiometer connected to J1. When it is turned all the way up to 3 volts, the microbit will translate it to 1023, but we have this number changed to 240 degrees, which is an angle the servo can accept. If the potentiometer is turned all the way down to ground, both volts and degrees will be zero. By turning the potentiometer, you can in this way send all possible angles between 0 and 240 degrees to the servo. Now the program has been expanded again, so that the microbit can remember the different movements. We start by pressing button B to reset the memory. Then we learn the microbit a sequence by turning the potentiometer. When this has happened, we press button A and the sequence is repeated. This is possible because the angle data are given an index and are stored in some so-called arrays. We look at an example. An empty array has been created here. Here is a set of data some random numbers, which have been given indexes from 0 to 9. The data with the index 3 has the value 9. Now the program looks like this. Here you see the block that creates two empty arrays and the block that stores the data. What is saved is the angle and the time that has elapsed since the last movement. When you press button A, the function called repeat runs. Here the stored data are read one set at a time. Each time a pause is held according to what is read and the current angle is passed on to the motor. The length of array block can find out how many records we have stored. When a robot has to perform complex movements, it also happens from data set. Some robots can be coded using virtual reality, 
where the programmer has to imagine painting a product. In this way, the data that the robot will use afterwards is saved. Now we look at a new setup where two servo motors are used. The setup is built as shown here. Unfortunately, only one servo motor is included in the set, so I found a 180 degree servo that I glued to a Lego brick as shown here. The program here can control the two motors, but can't remember the movements. Note that the new servo must be set to 180 degrees, and that it is connected to S2, again with a yellow wire upwards. The angle is increased by 5 degrees when you press button A. When you press button B, it becomes 5 degrees smaller. Now we want the robot to be able to repeat the movements. That is why we are adding this switch a crash sensor. It must be connected to J2. Before the robot has to learn a sequence, we press both button A and B to clear the memory. Once the sequence is learned, we press the switch to have it repeated. You can repeat the sequence as many times as you want. You can also add new movements. Or you can make a loop so that the robot keeps repeating and you don't have to press the switch constantly. Now the program has become a little more complicated but it can be downloaded from the link found in the description below this video. We will look at some of the blocks. In this block, three empty arrays are created. One for the time and one for each of the two servos. Each time a movement is made, data for all three things are saved, even if a motor is not moving. Here the movements are repeated in the same way as we saw earlier. If you have two NETSA servos, you can make this robot. If you use a microbit version 1, you will find that it cannot hold a lot of data you get an error 021. A microbit version 2 can hold 8 times as much data, so this type is best for the purpose.